For some reason, I took a personal oath this year to either give a first or second chance to shows that I completely skipped over or initially didn't love. And after Planet Sheen and Mr. Meaty, I didn't think I would so quickly subject myself to another memory that already has me tired just thinking about it. Fanboy in Chum Chum, possibly one of the most infamous cartoons Nickelodeon ever conjured up. So today on our The Fault in Our Nicktoon series, we're going to take a look at Fanboy in Chum Chum. Is it as bad as it's made out to be? Do my memories of being extremely put off by it still stand? Will, Will it blend? blend? These are the real questions we must find out. So I sat down, watched every episode of Fanboy and Chum Chum, and I want to talk all about this show. Roll the intro. Thank you to today's video sponsor, Privacy.com. Privacy lets you buy things online using virtual cards instead of having to directly use your real ones, thus protecting your identity and bank information on the internet. Right now, all new customers will automatically get $5 to spend on their first purchase. Just go to my link at Privacy.com slash Jordan Fringe to sign up now. Personally, using Privacy.com has been a nice safety guarantee for shopping online, not only for the holiday season, but for anything in general, like my constant bidding on random vintage collections. Why did I buy this? There's no such thing as being overprotective of your banking details. And by using virtual cards with privacy.com, your mind can be at ease just knowing you're navigating your online purchases responsibly for yourself. They mask your bank information. So essentially, they Batman your info so you can Bruce Wayne around your day. Privacy cards give you the ability to set up limits on each card and allow you to pause as well as close them at any time. With privacy.com, generate a one-time card number that can be used for signing up to free trials anonymously, which you can then close as soon as it's gone through. No more forgetting to cancel something or spending hours dealing with customer service for a refund. Merchant cards can be set up for reoccurring subscriptions that you want or on sites that you shop frequently, and it doesn't put your info at any risk if that site ever has a breach. Head to privacy.com slash Jordan Fringe and sign up for an account. Again, new customers will automatically get $5 to spend on your first purchase. That's privacy.com slash Jordan Fringe and sign up today with the link in the description. Thank you all for supporting the sponsors that support me. It truly helps the channel and I am grateful for the support. Fanboy and Chum Chum was an animated 3D CGI series that ran from 2009 to 2014 for a collective 52 episodes over two seasons. The show focused on the titular characters Fanboy and Chum Chum, two would-be superheroes that try to rid their town of Galaxy Hills of evil, while annoying everyone around them in the process. Most times it's just annoying everyone. Fanboy and Chum Chum, who have no real names apparently, are a pair of hyperactive, slow-witted, odd best friends who are obsessed with superhero comics, science fiction, fantasy, and action figures. These obsessions, especially spurred on by their love for their favorite superhero, Manartica, is what led to the boys' decision to don secret identities and underwear outside of their clothes in order to best fight crime within their small town. In a few episodes of the series, the superhero Manartica also also doubles as a holiday figure, similar to Santa Claus within the world of Fanboy and Chum Chum. To fight crime, Fanboy dons a green and purple outfit with a white pair of briefs worn on the outside of his superhero costume. Chum Chum, as Fanboy's sidekick, dons a similar disguise to help fight crime, his costume being orange and yellow with a likewise pair of briefs on the outside of his clothes. Fanboy and Chum Chum live through exaggerated, surreal daily experiences and misadventures as they get themselves into trouble while trying to save the day. But most of the time, we'd find them at school or at their local convenience store, just goofing off, just getting into shenanigans. Many episodes of the show play off of comic book tropes, pop culture cliches, or references to famous films. A Clockwork Orange has no business being here. Using those cliches as other plot points in the episode or for a punchline to a joke. While Chum Chum is canonically younger than Fanboy and many of the other characters in the series, he is still shown to be in the same class as them. So much like how this show is littered with non sense for the sake of being random or shocking, making sense is not on the list of things to do for this show. Oh, but this break is. You're watching Fanboy and Chum Chum. We'll be right back. Come on, brain freeze. Brain freeze. Ah! Cool. 
Welcome back. So after doing some research, making a few phone calls and stopping the Reaper invasion of Earth, we do have some canon regarding the age and classroom difference. In an interview with show creator Eric Rubbles, he explains that Chum Chum was in Fanboy's class, despite the age difference because Fanboy snuck Chum Chum into the class at the beginning of the school year and the teacher has failed to notice ever since. But there's this comment in the first episode about one of them or both of them being held back for some reason that the teacher made. So canonically, I don't know where that fits in, but it's there. Either way, Fanboy and Chum Chum as characters aren't too easy to get behind and root for because they really only operate as the destructive force of nonsense. When they are in school, they do things that mess up the school. When they are not at school, they are messing up stuff wherever they're hanging out, no matter where they go. But also in Fanboy and Chum Chum's class is Kyle Bloodworth, an insecure preteen wizard who despises Fanboy and Chum Chum for their lack of intelligence while secretly being jealous of their friendship. Aww. Kyle had to start attending Fanboy and Chum Chum's public school after getting expelled from his wizard school, Milkweed Academy, after turning his teacher, Professor Flan, into a raspberry flan. Throughout the series, he tries to get readmitted to Milkweed Academy, but never succeeds. Also in the series is Boogregard, or Boog, a short-tempered young adult bully and employee at Frosty Mart who is obsessed with the video game Chimp Chomp, a parody of Donkey Kong. He is often shown playing Chimp Chomp instead of working in several of the episodes and is, according to Rubble, a parody of John Travolta's Vinnie Barbarino character. I'm not not talking about your mother, Mr. Barbarino. Well, you better not talk about my mother. <laughs> His junior manager at Frostmart is Lenny, an accident-prone young man who is often stressed out and annoyed by fanboy and Chum Chum's antics whenever they come into the store to get their daily helping of Frosty Freezy Freezes. Mmm, nothing better than an off-brand slushy, or slurpy, or icy, or whatever came first. Fanboy and Chum Chum's love of Frosty Freezy Freezes is so integral to them as characters that a reference to it is made in the theme song with the lyrics, Brain Freeze, as they often get them every time they drink the product and their love for those frosty freeze freezes, I have to say that one more time, is often the major plot point in episodes, such as here in this episode, Brain Freeze. This episode actually originally was released as a DVD exclusive in 2011, technically years after all the other episodes had aired. Brain Freeze starts with Fanboy and Chum Chum learning that their favorite frosty freezy freeze flavor, Berry Pink, is being replaced by a new flavor. In desperation, Fanboy and Chum Chum chase down Berry, the personification of of the flavor berry pink as he is driven away to retirement. This chase leads into a crash that results in the creation of the biggest frosty freezy freeze ever. The boys overexcited at the giant drink consume a massive quantity which sends them all into a crazed sugar spree. When Fanboy and Chum Chum wake up the next morning with a brain freeze, they don't remember anything about what happened the night before and have also lost their treasured underwear. Gross. Fanboy and Chum Chum get the help of several of their friends to retrace their steps throughout their crazed night of sugar debauchery to find their underwear and slowly regain their memories. It also likes to parody The Hangover, especially with the fun photos at the end. And you know what? I give that one a thumbs up. But what breaks my heart when giving this series a fresh slate chance is that every time there is a great setup for an episode, something that is genuinely interesting, the ball is either dropped plot-wise with the outcome or, and in most cases, is pushed to the side as the rest of the runtime is a constant barrage of jokes, retorts, farts, some weird body horror and agitating sounds. In context, all of that never has a reason to exist other than existing for the sake of it. Some people may find this style of humor funny, and I'll admit a good fart joke can still get me to laugh. I mean, it was the only funny part of the Hitman's Bodyguard movie. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> But here in the show, it is just relentless on the viewer. That whole, oh, look at this, look at this shiny thing. Oh, look at it. And then just flailing it around the screen. It self distracts me from itself. If that somehow made sense to you, that's how it feels. And if it didn't make sense, that's also how it feels. Coming up, more fun with Ben Boy and his chummy sidekick, Ben Boy and Chum Chum. Next. Now, here's more Ben Boy and Chum Chum on Nick. With how much energy this animation has, how fast paced the show is, it just made me tired, seriously. So am I just not hip anymore? Am I, am I getting too old? Because I felt this way back when the show originally came out when I was younger. And like I said, it tries out some interesting things, but with the little explanation as to why these weird things are happening and how the rules of this universe they are in can change on a dime, it just gets hard to move along with the show when that's the reality that you just have to accept to get into the show in the first place. The concept of Fanboy and Chum Chum originated as an anime 
animated short back in 2009 by Eric. Four Random Cartoons, an animation showcase made by Nickelodeon and Frederator Studios from 2008 to 2009, which broadcasted 39 seven-minute original cartoons in half an hour time slots. Random Cartoons was created by Fred Cyber, the founder of Frederator Studios and co-founder of MTV. And I can't think of a better place for fanboy and chum chum to originate from than a show called Random Cartoons. Out of the 39 individual concepts that debuted on Random Cartoons, three would be chosen to be turned into full-length series. Adventure Time and The Bravest Warriors were both created by Peddleton Ward, though one was made into an actual show on television and the other was made for a show on the web. I am getting old, I just said on the web. And of course, Fanboy and Chum Chum, whose original episode was just called Fanboy. And really quick, like I just said, Adventure Time did get picked up, it went to Cartoon Network. Nickelodeon rejected Adventure Time and chose Fanboy and Chum Chum instead. And remember how they're always looking for the next SpongeBob? Well, just look at the merchandising on Adventure Time. Yeah, good call there. The full series officially premiered on November 6, 2009 on Nickelodeon following the SpongeBob special, SpongeBob's Truth or Square. And truth be told, I'd rather be watching that. The creator, Eric, got his start in cartoons back in 1998 in the animation department of the show RoboCop Alpha Commando, a spin-off series based on the RoboCop movie franchise. Since then, he has worked in the animation department for The Exes, a 2005 to 2006 Nicktoon focusing around a family of super spies concealing their identities from the outside world. We are covering that show really soon. And as a co-creator of Glitch Tex, which is a 2020 Netflix original animated series about a pair of teens that work for an agency that deals with uh, glitches, where video game characters manifest in the real world to cause trouble. While Fanboy and Chum Chum was not particularly well regarded by audiences, with most people finding the two main characters annoying and the show overly dependent on juvenile humor and poop jokes, with little depth, the show did help Nickelodeon build their CGI unit for television and animation. Even now, seven years later, the animation for Fanboy and Chum Chum does hold up pretty well, despite how quickly CGI animation tends to become outdated. But there is something I just can't get over. Yeah their eyes. The eyes in the show with their reflection, shading, and overall bulginess for some reason irks me so much. Like, why do I have to, to look at this? S stop that! The show went so far as to win a Daytime Emmy Award in 2011 for outstanding special class animated programs for its animation. So, that's neat. The show overall received the rating of a 3.2 out of 10 on IMDb, you know, the most trusted place for ratings. That's sarcasm. With this similar rating being the trend across multiple platforms. And thanks to that trend of low ratings across all these different places, it's what eventually led up to the show being canceled. I can't understate the level of displeasure most people who watch this show or grew up watching the show majority feel about it. If this were a tier list, this would have its own tier for most people as the single worst first Nickelodeon cartoon created. For me, I wouldn't go that far. All right, a little, little, little aggressive there. All right, relax. Going into the video, I was already reluctant because of having already seen a chunk of the show originally. But for my personal tastes, it just doesn't align itself with me, which is completely fine. The show shouldn't cater to me. It should be the creator's vision first and foremost. On one hand, I have no desire to ever watch through this show ever again and fully understand the low ratings that this show has. On the other hand, I can understand and respect the opinions of those who do like this show. Heck, I don't hate it, I'm just not into it. I can recognize it's not for me. So was Fanboy and Chum Chum the worst thing I've ever seen? Nah, I, I don't think so. Okay, maybe those eyeballs, but that's about it. If you enjoy it, that's great. For me, I'm I'm just exhausted. I, I want to take a nap. But he didn't learn anything, and neither did you. Goodbye, everybody! All the energy that this show has felt like they stole it all from me, and now I sit back here, a husk of a former content creator. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. Let me know your thoughts on the show in general in the comments. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter, or else. I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.